How's it going YouTube? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over kind of my weird introduction into cybersecurity. I'm going to be talking about my career and how I got to where I'm at today. Uh, and it's it's really unique. I mean, there's a story for everything. Um, I was actually just talking about this the other day. Uh, and I also saw a interview done by Cybersec Stu, which I just read through, and I'm like, I, I want to get my story out there because I want to help motivate, or I, I guess that's the term you'd say for people that, that want to get into security or just want to do anything in life and they feel like there is a prescribed way to get to where they need to go. So without further ado, I'm just going to get into it. Now, before I get into it, I actually want to apologize for the horrible lighting in this room. I have these things called cats and they ruined my blinds because uh, the blinds have strings on them. And for whatever reason, they said, oh, the friskies you fed me was not enough. So I'm going to chew on this nylon thing. And sure enough, they did that. So my blinds don't work. And I actually have a, uh, I, ha I have a, uh, jacket hanging in the window like I jerry rigged it in so apologies for that so without further ado let's get into it so let's turn the clock back to when I was in 10th grade um I was a complete dumbass in high school for lack of better terms I had a 2.2 GPA graduating uh I missed a couple weeks in sports because I didn't meet the GPA uh I guess minimum uh I was very 2.2 uh, is pretty low uh compared to everyone else in school whatever i knew i didn't want to go to college like right away i th i did not want to do that and everything they were teaching me i didn't want to learn because i thought what the hell am i going to use this for in day-to-day -day life and hint i have never used anything <laughs> i'm just being honest i didn't we didn't have home ed uh, we had shop. They took that away. B basic things that a, a typical adult should learn, didn't learn. Anyways, but I did know one thing. I wanted to be in aviation because I grew up uh, outside of Joint Base lewis McCord, and everyone I knew had some sort of military affiliation of some sort, and I thought helicopters were really cool. So I went to the recruiter's office, and I said, I want to be in helicopters. Like, I want to do that. And... One thing led to another, and I couldn't enlist for another year because I was taking ADD medication, and supposedly you're supposed to be out for two years or whatever like that. Anyways, year goes by, and I was real high strung on being in aerospace, and I came across this little desk uh, during lunchtime, and it said Pierce County Skill Center. Uh, no idea what the hell that meant, but I saw aerospace composites, uh, as a class, they had it on like a banner. I'm like, oh, well, I see aerospace. So I talked to them. They said, oh, you'll be learning how to make, you know, airline parts. I'm like, whatever. So I signed up for the class. It got me out of like four classes my senior year and, uh, it was aerospace related. Maybe it would help me, uh, with something getting into the military. Uh, so I did that class senior year and I actually did really good. I spoke in front of the uh, House, of, House of Ways and Means Committee in Washington State on behalf of skill centers and talked about the benefits, uh, everything I've learned in the class. And to this day, I'm really happy I took that class because I would not be where I'm at today if I never took that class. And then, you know, I'm like, oh, man, you know, this is pretty cool. Right out of high school, uh, I took the summer off. I mean, I still worked. I worked at Domino's uh, illegally. And then once the summer ended and everyone went to college, I got my first big boy job working as a supplier for Boeing at Torre Composites, where we made the actual uh, fabric, uh, for lack of better terms, for uh, the 777X and 787. Uh, we would make the plain weave unidirectional tape and Kevlar in, like, it's actually called pre-impregnated materials where we put the resin and like impregnate it. I thought I could never not laugh anytime someone said that. We impregnated fabric. Anyways, that job sucked so bad. I, I hated that job. I remember actually like my second day on the job, a uh, tornado hit the building, which was very, uh, it hit the, the wing building at Boeing like right across the street and it flipped over a couple rail cars and mind you this is washington state this is so weird like tornadoes don't really come here anyways left that job but i was like super duper uh like 
I want to join the military so bad. But let's rewind a little bit. Going from Domino's to being a supplier for Boeing, the paycheck went from like, I don't know, 200 bucks. Then I got my first big boy paycheck of like 25 or $3,000, whatever it was. I don't remember because of all the overtime. And one thing I really wanted as uh, in high school was a crotch rocket because all of my friends, you know, I'd see them on GoPros like doing wheelies. And I'm like, I want to be that. So I got myself a 2007 CBR 600 R. I'm 18 years old and I have a crotch rocket. So I had this motorcycle at the time. It was unfortunate, uh, but fortunately I got arrested for going 120 miles an hour. There was a very specific reason why I was going that fast. I wasn't going fast because I wanted to go fast. I had some late night business I wanted to get done and I got arrested and all this. I'm like, my life is flashing before my eyes because in that gap period where I like left Torrey and got arrested, I actually got a 15 uniform spot, which is a CH-47 helicopter repairman. And mind you, my end goal was to become a warrant officer and become a pilot so I could fly one of these airframes. So I got arrested and it's really hard to enlist in the military when you have an open felony case against you. So I couldn't enlist and I missed my ship date actually. But during that awkward time where I, you know, was waiting for my court date and all of this, I got into tech through Craigslist and I was making cables in a data center. And my interview was literally, I saw the ad, it said, you'll learn HVAC, blah, 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 Cat5, all of these terms I've never heard of before. And my interview was literally to make like 10 Cat5 cables crimping, you know, RJ45 on the end. They'd showed me like four examples and I made it. And they said, you're hired. And I was working part-time as a contractor in a data center. During this time, they hired a new engineer who kind of sparked the moment in me. I think we all have that one moment where it just sparked. He showed me trace route on a Windows computer. And I thought that was the craziest sh ever. He trace routed like something in San Jose or something like that. I'm like, because I didn't have an idea of what the internet was. I was just working this job. I had no ambitions of being in tech. And he showed me trace route. I'm like, I just talked to San Jose, like uh, something in San Jose that quickly, like milliseconds. He's like, yeah, you could try it on every site, like Google and stuff. I'm like, my brain was exploding at just trace route. And that was cool and all. He, I, I mean, that was kind of it. Like they, nothing else really happened from that. He showed me trace route. Uh, and then everything else was just data center stuff, which I still retain to this day, like the infrastructure of data centers. But anyways, after that, uh, the contract ended, I get my second job at a data center uh, which conveniently was literally the same property. It's three different buildings. And I ended up working at another company right next to it. Co coincidentally, like I, I had no idea where this company was. And I was working in the knock there. Same stuff, but I was a full-time employee. And I, I think I had benefits. I don't know. Um, but I was working full-time. I was a full-time employee. Um, and then during that like time I got that job, I go to court to get, you know, deal with my arrest, uh, for going, you know, 120 and whatever. Um, and I, you know, I go to court, uh, my first court date was actually postponed because my lawyer had a heart attack week goes by again. And then I show up to court and they actually ended up dropping everything down to negligent driving in the second degree, uh, which was pretty cool. It's off my record now, but I was working in tech and I kind of foot like, like moved my focus away from being in aerospace to tech. Like I wanted to do tech and I went back to the recruiter and told them like, Hey, I'm still wanting to enlist, uh, but I'm not interested in aerospace anymore. Is there like any tech jobs in the army? And they said they have this MOS 25 November in the reserves. And there is a bonus. Of course I got me a, bo a bonus. Um, and it, yeah, reserves, it's part time and it's nodal network systems operator, whatever the hell that means. And they said, yeah, you'll be working with Cisco, Juniper. I'm like, sold. I know what that is. I know what Cisco and Juniper is sold. Uh, and I signed up on May 14th, 2014, and I shipped to basic training June 2nd, 2014. So I had like 15 days or whatever to prep like usually people like they go through this thing called delayed entry program 
uh, where they like have six months. I had like 15 days. So my life just like changed and I threw a rager at the West End in Seattle and I think I went to Whistler for like a day or two, something like that. I don't remember, but I go to boot camp. Boot camp was fun. 1010 would do it again, not being sarcastic. Uh, Fort Jackson is, you know, I, I would say they could clean the, the porta potties or the porta johns as they called them a little bit more. Like, I think there's a sanitary limit of how much like actual could be in those. I, they went well above that, like at least twofold. Uh, but did all that. Did a AIT at Fort Gordon. It was like 29 or 32 weeks, something like that. Uh, came back and I was trying to get my original job. Uh, back at the you know the data center so i ended up getting a job uh being a fiber optic splicer at, at a very wealthy uh community in washington so uh yeah i was hired on uh, they interviewed me they took me out to the resort uh on a thursday and they said we'd like to hire you can you start on monday Mind you, this place was halfway across the, the state, and I was living at my parents at the time. So I had to find a house, housing pretty quickly, so I ended up moving to Central Washington University with a few of my friends who were also uh, uh, studying IT and cybersecurity at the time. And, you know, I spliced fiber for like four months or whatever. Uh, left that job on uh, a bad term, uh, and I was unemployed for like a little bit, but I spent a good chunk of time doing, uh, they're called skill port classes. Since I was in the military, I had access to like free online training for like CCNA and stuff like that. And I did that, and I had like a few active, active duty AGR time. I did like a month of that. Um, and then I got hired on at Amazon as a fulfillment center IT support technician. Built out a couple of fulfillment centers. Uh, I then moved over to AWS MVP data center operations and quickly left that job. <laughs> I, uh, I was there for like a couple months. And then there was a job opening uh, for a vulnerability management role within Amazon that was entry level and the stars just aligned. And yeah, I applied for it. I interviewed for it and I got it. So that was pretty normal, I guess. Uh, I, I guess I just had the qualifications uh, or background at least, and I was internal. Uh, but then it gets funny how I got into consulting. It's ran by my buddy, uh, Danny Howerton, Metacortex, and Dan Anderson, uh, Zoltan. Uh, the way I met Danny was through eBay. Um, so I imported a, G a Nissan Skyline GTR from Japan, and parts for this car were impossible to get and they're very expensive uh, because it was never sold in the United States so I decided to set up my own business so I could get wholesale pricing on parts for myself and I decided well I'm not going to be greedy and sell these parts online to other people uh, so I did exactly that and I sold uh, a pair of wheels on eBay uh, now I was I signed myself up to go on this car rally called Corsa America where I was going to drive from Vail, Colorado to San Diego back up to Seattle. And I sold some wheels in Salt Lake City and I messaged the buyer on eBay and I was like, "Hey, FYI, I'm going to be in town with my car. You bought these very specific wheels. Like these wheels were only really made for a Nissan Skyline." Messaged them about that, didn't get a response. The car rally actually did like an advertising campaign in like the different areas because there was like uh, daily driven exotics and like all these big name YouTubers, uh, car YouTubers were like on this rally. So they wanted people to show up. So we pulled into Salt Lake City and everyone's crowding around daily driven exotics, uh, Huracan. And then here I come backing hard parking my Nissan Skyline and I see this guy wearing like globe shoes and a Nissan Skyline shirt and he beeline straight to my car. He's like, you sold me wheels on eBay. Well, so let me, I, I'll throw up a picture of my car. So I was doing this rally to find a business partner. I wanted to start my own consulting firm. Um, and I also have a sticker machine, which you can see right there. Uh, I also made stickers for quite a bit of time, uh, full time actually. Uh, and I put Sakura Cybersecurity on the side of my car. I spelled security wrong. I put three R's on it and I posted it to Reddit, not knowing that I, I literally, I took this car from Seattle to, to Vail, Colorado, not realizing that. Uh, someone called it out on Reddit, and I'm actually friends with that person as well because uh, they lived in the area. 
uh, where I live. But anyways, I, I, you know, Danny and I chatted for a bit and I was like, Hey, if you know anyone in the area that needs cybersecurity services, here's my card. And I, I, I don't know what he said verbatim, but it was something along the lines of, ha, huh, that's funny. I work in security too. Uh, and yeah, he actually owns Mark five security and we ended up meeting up at DEF CON 26 uh, at a bar somewhere in the, I think at Caesars. We drank for a little bit and I said, I want to poke your brain about consulting. Uh, one thing led to another and I ended up signing a partner agreement with them and I actually did one consulting gig with them. Uh, so yeah, uh, I would not be where I'm at today without getting arrested and without eBay. So thank you. Uh, Washington State Police and Fort Lewis Military Police and thank you eBay for giving me the opportunities that I have so with all of that I wanted to just lay out my entire story and just let you all know there is no cut and dry way to get into security you will come across very interesting situations that you won't know at the time but will lead up into something bigger uh, you don't need to go to school to go into security I don't have any formal education I have a, G, or a, a high school diploma, and I also jokingly say I'm a Harvard alumni because I took one class online, and the definition of alumni is a, a graduate or previous student, so I was actually just at Cambridge the other day, and I bought myself a Harvard sweater, and I was like, I'm a Harvard alumni. I took CS50 or whatever the hell it was like five years ago. <laughs> so anyways, uh, the, the moral of the story is be a self thinker, do your own research. There's tons of resources online. You don't need to get into debt to go to school. Uh, if you need to marry someone in the EU and get free school, <laughs> if you want to, or you could do, uh, you know, free programs, uh, Harvard, MIT. And I, I, I think some other schools do free programs where you can learn online. Uh, and also Udemy. Uh, I think that is paid. There's some classes that are free, but way cheaper than you know twenty thousand dollars plus a year uh so i would highly recommend that and then also just be you know i guess meet people you know i don't know it's hard to explain like i don't expect anyone to replicate my situation because it's so odd but anyways that's it for this video if you enjoy content like this please give it a thumbs up uh hit the subscribe button and also i think i'm at like almost 400 subscribers so thank you all for that that's awesome I was at like a hundred when I first like made my Kismet video. Anyways, thank you for watching. Bye.